Well, hey everybody, in this video, I wanna talk a little bit about audio editing. And this is a follow-up video to the previous video I just did in this playlist called Audio Recording. So go ahead and watch that first if you haven't already. And I'd also recommend watching my video where I go over MIDI region editing, since there are a lot of similarities between MIDI region editing and what we're gonna be talking about today, which is audio region editing. And the link to that video is somewhere on the page here or down in the description below. And for this tutorial, I'm gonna be editing a small portion portion of a dialogue recording. And then in the video after this, we're going to be applying a little bit of EQ, some compression and volume automation to that dialogue recording. And then I'll show you how to bounce it down into a final WAV file and MP3 file. So here I have recorded what could be the first 20 seconds or so of a baptism story that we would record for our baptism portion of our services at LCBC Church. We have about three baptism services a year. So this isn't a real story. I just made up the names. It's just an example. And I recorded it with a couple of mistakes and problems in it, as you'll hear. So let's take a listen, and then we'll talk about how to fix the mistakes and make it sound a little bit better. Hello, my name is John. I live in... La I live in Lancaster with my wife Sally and our three children. I work in construction and have owned my own company for the past 15 years. About two years ago, my neighbor Bill invited my family and I to LCBC. I initially wasn't interested in going, but we decided as a family to check it out one Sunday morning. All right, so the first thing we hear is this obvious stutter mistake at the beginning where I started the sentence over. So this sentence is fine here, and then this part is fine. I just want to get rid of the mistake. I'm going, to, I'm going to delete this section out, and then I'm going to get rid of the gap in time that will be created as a result of the edit. Let's talk about how to split regions, which I talked about in an earlier video. So this is just going to be a bit of a refresher, so feel free to skip ahead to the next section if you want. Uh, so one way you can split a region is similar to how you would do it in Ableton, which is place your playhead where you want to split the region and then you would select that region, and then instead of Command E, like you would do in Ableton, Logic uses Command T as the key command to split a region. So I would split it here, and then here, and then I'm going to select the region in the middle that I want to get rid of, and just press Delete. The way I prefer to do an edit like this is with the Marquee Tool, and there's two ways to access the Marquee Tool or set it up for access. And one way is to set your marquee tool to be the command click or secondary tool. So up here in this area, um, this drop down will select my primary tool, and I have it set to pointer, which is what I want. It's, it's how the mouse pointer looks um, most of the time. And here is the secondary or command click tool, a drop down menu, and you can see that I have that set to this plus sign, which is the marquee tool. So whenever I hold down the command key in the main window area, I can toggle back and forth between the pointer tool and the marquee tool. So the way I like to access the marquee tool is to set Logic's preferences up so that when my mouse pointer goes to the bottom half of an individual track area, it's going to turn into the marquee tool. So as you can see, as I bring my mouse pointer down, as soon as it crosses that midway point, it's going to turn into the plus sign. So the way we're going to set that up in Preferences is we're going to go to Preferences. Let's go to General, Editing, and then we're going to click on Marquee Tool Click Zones. And as I'm doing this video, pay attention to how the mouse pointer is going to change function and change the way it looks as well, depending on where I place it in relation to the track area and in relation to where I position it around the region. It's going to change its look and it's going to change its function. Um, and that's going to be how a lot of the uh, audio editing is going to be done with fades, with cuts, and things like that in the track area. So with the marquee tool, I can do simple splits of a region. I'm just going to find where I want to make my split and then double click. But for this, I'm going to click and drag over the portion of my region I want to get rid of. Then when I have it selected and you can see that it's highlighted, all I do is press delete and that section is gone. So now I want to remove this gap that's been created. So let's take a look at the drag feature and this drop down is going to give you some options on how regions will interact with each other as you slide them around in the main track area. So for now, let's choose no overlap. I know there's some other options, but this is the one I use most often. Now, when I drag this first region just over top of the second region, it's going to trim that second region so that the regions don't overlap, but they're still going to butt up against each other. 
Let me just go a little bit further just to show you what I mean. See how that's um, cutting that second region? Let me just undo that. So also remember that if my mouse pointer is at the bottom corners of the regions, I can lengthen and shorten them by clicking and dragging the start or end points of the regions. You can see how that mouse pointer changes to that different icon look. And just be careful if you want to lengthen a region that you, that you drag it from this bottom corner. Um, as I move my mouse pointer up, you can see that it's going to change to this mouse icon, which is the looping uh, feature. So there is a difference between looping, which we talked about in an earlier video, and lengthening. So what I'm trying to do here is find a natural gap of time between the two sentences, not too close, not too far apart. So you'll probably need to um, just kind of experiment to get that right feel. Hello, my name is John. I live in Lancaster with my wife, Sally. Hello, my name is John. I live in Lancaster with my wife, Sally, and our three children. So once I've figured out that gap, I can now position my mouse pointer uh, directly between the two regions, kind of like in the lower half of the regions, until the pointer looks like this. So now I can click and drag left or right to position that split somewhere in the middle between the two regions. And you'll need to listen to it. You want to make sure that you're not cutting off, say, the breath at the very beginning of a phrase. Let's talk a little bit about fades. So lastly, with this edit, I want to apply a bit of a crossfade between the two regions to make this transition really seamless. So if you don't use fades between your audio edits on your audio regions, many times you're going to hear this abrupt start and end point of the regions. Sometimes it sounds like a clicking sound, and you're not going to want that. To enable us to do fades in the main window with the mouse pointer, uh, we're going to go into Preferences. Let's go to General, Editing, and we're going to make sure that Fade Tool Click Zones is checked. Now when I position my mouse pointer near the top corners of my audio regions, the pointer is going to turn into this tool. Now I can click and drag to apply a fade. So if I want to fade out on this region, I'm going to click and drag left. And if I want to fade in, I'm going to click and drag right. After I create the fade, I can now move my mouse pointer over the fade, and the mouse pointer is going to look different again. And that's going to allow me to adjust the curve of the fade by clicking and dragging up and down. So I'm not really going to do a lot of that for uh, small fade-ins and fade-outs, but if you have like a really long fade-in or fade-out, maybe you'll want to explore using this curve feature. Okay, so for our case in this transition, instead of fading out on this region and doing a fade-in on this region, the most natural sounding way to do this will be a crossfade. So what's going to happen with a crossfade is that at the point when one region starts to fade out, uh, the adjacent region that follows will start to fade in. So that fading in and, out, uh, in and out happens simultaneously, which causes that really smooth sounding transition. So let's first get rid of these fades. And to do that, I'm just going to hover over the fade and then control click and then remove fade out. And then on this one, same thing, remove fade in. So to make a crossfade, I'm going to click in the fade area at the top of one of the regions and then drag across the other region the other way. So just like with a normal fade, I can make that crossfade as long or as short as I want. And if I place my pointer between the two regions right about here, it will change to this view, and then I can drag left or right to adjust the curve of the crossfade. And I still have the option to adjust where the regions come together if I uh, click and drag from here. Or I can drag this first region and drag it more to the right. Or if I wanted to separate these regions and create more of a gap, I can move this region to the left. So the crossfade is still there even though it looks like it disappeared. Uh, if I lengthen the start of the region here, you can see the crossfade return. And if I want to remove the crossfade, just like how I removed the fade ins and the fade outs, I'm going to control click over the crossfade and choose remove crossfade. 
Now, sometimes you can have lingering fades that don't look like they are there, but uh, you might move the file around and all of a sudden a fade will pop up and it'll look kind of weird. Um, you'll be like, hey, I didn't put that there. Well, let's open the inspector here and take a look at region parameters. And we're going to press more here. So this area right here shows all the parameters for fades and crossfades of audio files selected. And you can actually do all of your fade editing from here. And sometimes you're able to edit more fine detail doing it this way. But 90% of the time, I'm doing my fades in the main window. But if you have some remnant of a crossfade on an audio file that you can't get rid of, go over here and set your fade in and fade out to zero and make your type be out. All right, so we've done our edit and applied our crossfade, and this is what it sounds like now. Hello, my name is John. I live in Lancaster with my wife Sally and our three. All right, let's keep listening to the file. I work in construction and have owned my own company for the past 15 years. About two. So here we have a problem where it looks like the mic got bumped as I was recording it. So it's always a good idea to have your speaker do a second take of something, even if you think you got it right the first time, because these sorts of things might, might be hard to notice when you're recording, and you only might catch them after the fact. So I do have another pass at this line here. So I want to replace this line with this line. With the marquee tool, I'm going to click and swipe over this line. Then I'm going to click and drag it to where I want to place it. And you can see as I'm doing this, the file is snapping to different rhythmic values. Uh, since I have the snap feature on, I'm going to leave that snap feature on, but I can disengage it momentarily uh, by holding down control as I'm clicking and dragging. So now you can see that I have a very fine movement when I slide the region. And I'm going to place this uh, right about here on top of the original. So let's listen to it, and then I can further adjust the position of it, move it forward or backwards, and then create the crossfades like I showed you before. Let's listen to the rest of the recording. Company for the past 15 years. About two years ago, my neighbor Bill invited my family and I to LCBC. I initially wasn't interested in going, but we decided as a family to check it out one Sunday morning. Okay, I think it sounds pretty good. So maybe what I'd want to do is just trim this uh, end region just a little bit here. I'll put a fade out at the last region. And let's make sure to put a fade in at the very first region as well. Well, thanks everybody for watching. In the next video, I'm going to be adding some equalization and compression to this recording and also doing a little bit of volume automation on it. And then I'm going to show you how to bounce it down to a WAV file and an MP3 file.